back uh, from the commercial break. And uh, before that, we were talking about, first, it was the issue of diversifying uh, the economy. And then we then moved on to the issue of the speed of justice and uh, the administration of the justice system. And Mr. Onunuju had just finished uh, making a point. And I saw that Mr. Akiyoshu, it, it was like you wanted to make an intervention. You wanted to make an intervention. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Please proceed. He had mentioned the case of the snatching of the ballot box in Lagos and the jungle justice that was meted out to the man who was responsible for it. Uh, and I, do, I was very, very worried when I saw the video clip on that, that when did we become so brutal to ourselves? When did we become so insensitive? I saw a man carry a stone with two hands to knock on a fellow man. Even if he has committed a crime, there should be a way of dealing with it. Arrest him, hand him over to the police. But when just jungle justice becomes something that is celebrated, then we're in trouble as a nation. Two wrongs will never make a right. And what I've been hearing most people say, and what it seemed to have alluded to, was that the man who committed the but supposed ballot box, box snatching, because really nobody saw a video of him snatching the ballot box. All we saw was him being beaten up, saying that he snatched the ballot box. Now, the man who carried the stone with both hands to break the head of another person, should that person also not be punished? And we just gloss over some of these things. And the federal government did say that anybody that is caught snatching ballot boxes will be dealt with. But it's not for you to take the laws into your hands to deal with the person. Uh, and I think we need as a nation to start developing human feelings and empathy for one another. Right. We're still dealing with human beings. The number of things that we see, the number of killings we hear every day is really blood coddling. That you can imagine that we are doing this to ourselves as human beings. Whether you're a herdsman, whether you're a farmer, any kind of killing is bad. And we should find a way to educate people and regain the love and passion that has been lost with each other. And surely, surely, if there's delay in administering justice to those who have gone wrong, then we have a problem which is larger than that. And in dealing with that, as I said earlier, the administration of justice is slow, is faulty, and a lot of it does not only lie with government, it lies with ourselves. Lawyers like him, I, I mean, we're both lawyers, we get employed by people who have done wrong. And many lawyers go to court with only one aim, with, to delay justice, look for technicalities to delay and defer what is right, rather than dealing with the issues. Uh, and as you will see, this um, government has tried to not to intervene in matters that have to do with administration of justice. He did mention that it is good to let whoever is employed to do a job to do a job. And I think this administration has been one that has shown clearly we will not intervene in how you do your work. How EFCC has gone about its work has been totally left to them to do and pursue their cases to its logical conclusion. We don't hear any case of intervention or that government, federal government has called and says, stop. We have seen governors in the part, ruling party go to prison. This is the first time we see governors in ruling party go to prison for offenses they committed. Even when they change parties, the corruption cases against them have not stopped. When Saraki was in APC, he was being prosecuted. When um, in, in, uh, Oju Zokalu has cases against him that have not been stopped, although he's in the ruling party. And this is the first time I'm seeing that the government is not directly getting involved in those kind of issues. And one thing you will say, uh, when you mention body language, body language of this administration, even the worst critics of Buhari, all I've heard them say, none of them have said he's corrupt. Everybody may say he's slow, they've said he's ill, but they don't say he's a corrupt person. This administration has shown clearly that if you steal money, you will go to jail. It may take time, you may, it may take a while to find you, but if you are caught, you will go to jail. And that's the kind of body language we need at the top, not one in which they have been told before that the, federal, the presidency goes and says, I need 60 billion naira today, give me cash. 
and the president withdraws money straight from the, pre, from the treasury. No consequences, no questions asked. I need $2 billion. We've had cases of the Strategic Alliance Agreement in which $3 billion was divided between three people. No consequence for that. They're busy running all over the court, all over the world with different kinds of injunctions and um, court cases going on to stop the prosecution of these kids. People go to court and get uh, injunctions that say, you cannot try me forever. Where do these kind of things happen? And until we work together as individuals, as, in, as um, professionals, there was a case against the um, CGN recently, and everybody went up in arms. But people left the real issue that what exactly went wrong? What can we do to correct it? But rather than deal with issues, we politicize it, we trivialize it, and look at how to pass the blame to the executive. And I think until we begin to address this seriously, we will not move forward with our administration of justice. Well, Mr. Ladi, the decision yeah. of the president affects us. The institutions also affect us. And he mentioned something about the ballot box, um, your alleged ballot box snatcher, and talked about security and talked about how barbaric um, the act was. But essentially, sometimes we have security agencies who investigate. They tell us they're investigating, but we do not hear the reports. We do not hear a follow-up. Our uh, agencies don't really talk to us, talk to Nigerians on resolving some of these issues. Indeed. But, um, Mr. Aino, what does that say, where agencies of government do not talk to the citizens? I mean, uh, it's like saying you're leading the people, but you don't talk to them. Instead, you, how do you, some people say, you talk at them. You address press conferences, mm -hmm. but you don't talk to the people. Mm -hmm. How does that work? In building a nation, it, it doesn't. Um, you are just crashing it. It's not. It's not. It's not going to be effective, because you need to connect with people before you can make a change. If you don't connect, if people don't see you. That's what, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. The man in the glasses. Akio Oshun. was saying, if you don't have an empathy, people need to connect with you as a leader before you can make an impact. So if you just talk at people, uh, you are using somebody to, to talk on your behalf, it's not, it's not going to yield the desired result. It can move, but not the desired result. I will say that clearly now. Uh, but if I'm allowed to talk now, I, I would like to see talk about that revenue generation a little bit. Because <clears throat> we need to, most of us in Nigeria don't understand the concept of wealth creation, we don't. And I take for instance, there was a time I was talking to someone who just feel that, um, oh, okay, this hotel, they are not doing enough, uh, can just, because he's a security man, and he was just misbehaving. And I said, do you know that this structure is providing job for 600 people? And he said, no, 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 uh, 600 people, no, it's just few of us. How many people? I say, okay, let's do it this way. Because now if you chase people because of your attitude, you will cut off the remaining 600 people. And I said, now, who make that soap? Is it this hotel? He said, no. Who make that washing machine? Is it this hotel? He said, no. Who is, who is making that towel? Is it this hotel? He said, no. What about, the, what about the drinks? What about the person that clean? I said, what about that oil? What about that vegetable? What about that plate? Someone is selling them, someone is manufacturing those things. And the moment you cut this particular uh, customer, or you misbehave, or government shut that particular building up, you cut off people completely. Now, how does this work? When we're talking about revenue gener generation, a lot have been said by the wonderful gentleman in Abuja there, you know, until we have, I'm still back to that, my strategic planning. There must be a long time planning for Nigeria, for Nigerians. We need to have it. If it's going to take us to have another national conference or whatever, we need to go back to that Nigerian dreams. Why are we a nation? We need to go back. All what we have been saying is, okay, we are just, because from my own background, I, if there is, if you, if you, I'm just 
for an example now. If you slap me now, I will look at, I won't look at the action. There must be a reason why you slap me. So I will look at those reasons and I will prevent it from happening again. So, for us... I can see Neota just uh, <laughs> looking at you. That's a very unusual, that's a very unusual attitude no, to take. You, because you need to, that's the only way you can prevent him from slapping me again. But if I react again, just like what uh, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Kola said, if I, react, if I react immediately, two wrongs, we just make a right. We don't blame and make a right. So now, to make that revenue, we need to see ourselves. What are those things that we need immediately? We, we mentioned, I mean, if we, we've talked about human, um, human capacity development. We've talked about it, but something is still missing. Where, where are our technical colleges? Where are they? Because right now, we are importing people to come and fix our house. We are importing people to come and do our welding. We are importing people to come and do the PLP. We are importing people to do us. Why? Because we are still not being able to address those skill sets. Everybody, everybody is going to university now. Uh, no, Mr. Hano, there is that argument of importing people to come and do, uh, for want of a better example, our POPs mm -hmm. because we don't have the skill set. Some people no, we disagree do have... because they are those with the skill set, mm -hmm. but the mindset and attitude. No, that, I've addressed the issue of mindset. That's why I said the president, the new administration right now, they need to do more of changing that perception. And I thank the two men talking about consequence management. That has to be in place. That I love if there's something I'm taking out of here today is a taxpayer should go to jail before the robber. So if you violate... <laughs> a yeah, non-taxpayer. A non-taxpayer. <laughs> I, I love that one. A non-taxpayer. I love that. So what I'm trying to say is that he's just saying us there should be a consequence management. For instance, you pay somebody, a carpenter, a mason, or as the case may be, and they just do a nonsense job for you. And you've paid. A mechanic, you've paid. And you can't go to any court or anywhere to get redressed. Even Majesty Court, you can't go. So that has to be in place. The skill set is there. But what's, are they giving you value for, for that? For your money. For your money. Mm. If the answer is no, that's a problem. But somebody is out there who is there to give me value for my money. So you will just pack that person. And it's affecting our economy. It's affecting because you can't tax him. You can't do anything. But this other man... Our brothers is porous. He doesn't have anything. He put the money in his pocket. And he goes back. And he goes back. We are losing revenue. So we need to address that. And the only way to address that, the skill set that we are enjoying today are the product of those technical colleges. We need to go back and start realizing, appreciating the polytechnics. All of us cannot be a graduate. Some people, I mean, all of us, College of Education. But Polytechnics, they're also Polytechnic graduates. I know, so but what I'm saying is that they, 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 they always cannot. stigmatize them, which I don't like. You don't stigmatize these people because they have knowledge. The same thing with College of Education. Everything is going to, because these are the people that are trained to teach people. There is technicalities in teaching a child. These people are trained to be that, but we are taking them into that area. Now, another one that I want us to talk about too, part of the agenda, because we are talking about, we've talked about um, revenue crea creation. And, um, there is one other thing that is so important, and it hurts me so much. People know the tallest building, but they don't know that there is a pillar or a mirror pillar in Ife. People don't know that there is, there is uh, Arochuku. People don't know all those things. I was talking to somebody that, yeah, carry game reserve. We need to, you know, I said, oh. He's in East Africa. <laughs> and I said, Yeah, Kari Gemiza is in Nigeria here. One, we need to talk about the history. We need to restore the history back. Because when you, for you to appreciate now and future, you need to look at your back. Let me put you on pause, uh, Mr. Aino, because we've got to wrap up this segment right. and we have uh, less than five minutes. All right. And go back to Abuja. Uh, Mr. Kiyoshu, uh, I'm going to give you two minutes and I'm going to give uh, Mr. Anonoju as well two minutes. So, in very brief order, can you give us what would be your parting words? Having gone through this process now, what are we left with at this point, given the trend of our discussion up till here? Yes. The first thing I will say is to agree with my brother in Lagos that strategy is important in running government. We can see that Lagos State for an example, had a master plan 
for a number of years. And every successive governor that has come in has plugged into the master plan and has continued to continuously develop Lagos. That is why you see Lagos has the largest population, Lagos has a growing economy, Lagos has the best security in terms of states in the country. And many people who cannot go home for fear of being kidnapped and things like that in their own home states all reside and stay in Lagos. In terms of um, consequence for bad behavior and consequence management, I think we have a role, and, and that comes back to the media as well, that they need to pick up on the issues of investigative journalism. A lot of accusations are made, things are said, but I hardly find the media following through. If a man starts an investigation and the police arrest, do you follow through with the investigation? But what you find is that the media only follow sensational stories. When it is hot, when it is bad news, that is what they want to hear. But they hardly ever report on the good things that are progressive. And that just doesn't sell. And as you know, it is only things that are newsy that private media tend to follow. Lastly, connecting to the people which my brother also mentioned, that government should come to the level of connecting to the people. And for the first time in looking at um, elections this season campaign, I see a new style that was adopted by some of the parties, which involved door-to-door -door campaigns. Mm -hmm. For the first time, you could see the leaders, you could see the vice president going to homes, individual homes, towns and cities. And you had comments like, oh, some of us have never seen our local government chairman, but we can see the vice president in our homes. I, I think I'm sorry, Mr. Kiyoshu, uh, the, the, the two minutes, the two minutes are up. The two minutes are up. The two minutes are up. Your two minutes it. are up. My apologies. Thank you very uh, much. Mr. Thank you Ronaldo, very much. Thank you. your two minutes. Thank you very much. I want to expand something. Uh, the most corrupt person in the society is not the man who steals the money. Mm. It is the man who corrupts the process. That's right. I also want to say that the potism is the most violent form of corruption. That's the kind of corruption that Hitler used. So I uh, <coughs> wouldn't want to hear people being exonerated of corruption. It's not true. There are different kinds of corruption that are being today undertaken by politicians in Nigeria. That's one. Two. Secondly, in the issue of long-term development plans, if we're able to devolve power to the federation units, either using the geopolitical zones, which are economically viable if you do not want to use the states, if the federal government cannot plan on its long-term development strategies, I believe competition from those geopolitical zones to whom power has been devolved to may, just like it happened in the 60s, when Western Nigeria started the university college in Ibadan, the university, the East followed suit to also compete in the soccer. And then Amadabelo went to Zaria to do that. Allow competition. Societies do better when different aspects of that society compete among themselves. So as I'm saying, the very best thing for us to do, devolve power to the federation units. Either devolving that to the, fed, the geopolitical zones as the production unit because they seem <coughs> economically viable, or if you want to start the state, a lot of the states cannot do it on their own. But start right now to do the restructuring. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, in fact, I was, uh, you, you came in just in time uh, for us to conclude this segment. We'll be talking about agenda setting as uh, we begin the countdown to the start of the new administration. Let me start by thanking, or let me end by thanking Mr. Dakpo Akionshu uh, and uh, Kach Ononoju in our Abuja studios. And then, of course, uh, Mr. Shola Aino here in Lagos. It's been a pleasure having you, you with us. As we take on this break, we'll take a look at some of the expectations from other people, this time in Benue State in North Central Nigeria. Please stay on with us. <laughs>